Uh, Carlton, we know they're in love with the draft, aren't they, Ralphie? We've heard it over and over and over. And the Carlton fans there are very happy to erect a statue of Nick Austin as well because they're so thrilled to get pick three. Now, they had the picks for Dan Houston there, but they really felt like they needed to add to their midfield another explosive midfielder. So there's four or five players there. Everyone's saying it's going to be Finn O'Sullivan, but they're so excited by that. In the end, they, they kept Brody Kemp and they also have Nick Haynes. Um, I think there'll be some fans at round 10 when Dan Houston's doing great things at Collingwood who might say, hey, why didn't we have a crack at him? But, I mean, the fact that Carlton was so keen on another midfielder in a good draft, it shows you that they don't actually feel like their midfield is perfectly blended just yet. Yeah, they obviously felt like they didn't need Dan Houston. I do think they have given up a lot, though, for pick three. When you look at it there, they started with 11 and 31. Those picks are gone and their future one. So they did essentially give up two first-rounders and a pick in the 30s to get pick three. So they need to nail it. They need to make sure that they get a player. They have been scarred before by pick threes, Carlton. So they have to get the player right and hopefully they get a player that can run shotgun with Sam Walsh for the next 15 years. I think they're happy with their current crop. They're really happy with their high-end talent. It uh, took them a long way last year. It's rinse and repeat. It's go again. It's do the same, potentially a little bit healthier, a little bit more luck than last year. It all ran aground uh, late in the season. You know, they, they just need an even run at it. I, I'm, I'm big on that. They've got stability off-field for the first time in a long time. I, I think that uh, they don't necessarily need one player to come in and be the answer or be the, the, the difference maker, they're stacked with talent. This, this won't be a, a talent issue if they uh, run aground this year. Yeah, so Zach Williams is an $800,000 player. They're going to play him as a small forward. And so, look, if all uh, hell breaks loose, they can clearly just slot him back in at half back there. They've got Adam Sard and Chicotta and Cowan. They're going to lose 49 goals from Owies and uh, Kennedy. Uh, I think if Jack Silvani comes in and has a decent run at it, and again, if they get a big run, a decent run from all of Tom McConning and, of course, the two power forwards, I think we all believe there the talent is there. They don't need Houston. He just would have been a nice add-on, but they have coming out of contract next year. TDK, Saad, Chera, Motlop, Newman and McGovern. And so the money they save, they will certainly put into those half-dozen players. Yeah, that's it. They're, they're in good shape. They, they probably haven't addressed their small forwards, and obviously always was their, their main goal kicker down there, so they're going to need someone to step up, um, whether they change some roles or just get some improvement from Motlop and, and maybe a bit more from, from Fantasia and co. But otherwise, as you said, I think the Brisbane model is now the right one. Just keep going to the well again. Trust your process. Trust your list. Tinker with it a little bit and add. But just keep going. Took Brisbane, you know, six goes at it. So Carlton have got to hold steady and uh, they should be thereabouts again. The other side of this story are the West Coast Eagles and the fans aren't happy, Ralphie. No, they are <laughs> furious with them because they had pick three and they traded down Liam Baker and pick 12. They didn't want David Robertson enough. Guys, what do you think about a club that, let's face it, had committed very early to Liam Baker. Matt Clark was his former recruiter. I think they had a lot of discussions just on one-on-one. -on -one. And in the end, they probably knew they needed him, but they didn't want to give up as much as they did. Do you think there was any way they could have reneged? Or sometimes you just got to commit to a, a, a vice-captain who, let's face it, will play very, very good football, even if he's not an A-grader? No, look, they're in a situation, unfortunately, where they, they committed to Liam Baker and they needed to make that decision to stick with him and, and show you know, that, that they're a club you want to deal with in the future because they are going to have to deal with Harley Reid and they're going to deal with maybe Chad Warner coming to the club and other players. So they committed to Liam Baker. They assured Richmond they would get something. Now, it didn't work out exactly as they would have liked once Hawthorne got rid of that pick 14. It made it really tricky, but they stuck to their word. And I think that's, that counts for something, King, as a football club. Yeah. I know they could have been you know, been hard asses and walked him through and upset other clubs and those sorts of things, but unfortunately, sometimes this is the way it falls. They get some experience in. And who knows, pick 12 in this draft, they could still nail someone, and they probably will. Bo Allen's there, the Western Australian. They can still get someone really special if they get it right. So they've gone from 3 to 12, Ralphie, mm -hmm. but they got more in the Barras deal in the end yep. next year. They've got a future in. first, second and third yeah. from Hawthorne and then obviously they have their own first rounder as well. So they've probably ended up winning some fans back yeah. late in the uh, trade no doubt. period today. So if you're a West Coast fan, you say, I've seen premierships where Collingwood won with Dacos and Ngoi. Really top-end talent. Richmond did it. Uh, Melbourne obviously was able to do it with Christian Petraka and Luke Jackson and, uh, and, and the like. So they've traded from what could have been Harry Sheasel down to Dinby and also Elijah Hewitt, 9 and 14. They've done it again here. Harley Reid they got, but everyone in Melbourne is saying he's going to wait for a long time next year. So if he did leave, and we're not saying it's certain, they'd be saying, have we got those top five picks that history would show you recently will win your premierships? Yeah, they don't. But I also think, again, this is from past mistakes has left them in a situation where they've needed to get multiple picks in. So they've been forced to do it, really, because of what had happened in the past where they didn't decide to trade out some senior players and get some draft picks in when they should have uh, a few seasons ago. So they've been left to pick up the mess. So there's a new, new coach now, new list manager, Don Pikes there. They've got some heavy lifting still to do, um, and it's going to take, still take plenty of time. We know that. But, but I do think the starting point of this discussion, and Joey touched on it, 
They've maintained integrity as a football club. They made a commitment to Liam Baker and they got it done. Now, it's been ugly in terms of what the fans want to accept and if they paid overs, probably. But in the end, they committed to a guy mid-year and got it done. Now, that, that will come up, given their situation right now, this will be a, a, a position they're in probably six times in the next three years. And that player they're talking to will say, you know what, they're going to get the deal done. If they had have reneged, where would they be? And, you yeah. can't get the Chad Warner deal done if you renege on Liam Baker this yeah. year. And Sarah, Luke Jackson, uh, sorry, uh, Liam Baker gets you Jack Graham, who was effectively a package deal. So those two are part of the big exodus we have of uh, Premiership stars from Tigerland. Kingy, how many games do they win next year? Uh, I'd be surprised if they won four or more. They're going to be so young. They're going to be very young. And I don't necessarily think the fans are going to go to the football expecting to win. They're going to go and watch... Or go some... to the football if the numbers show yeah, crowd numbers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I think there's year. always a reason to go, Sarah. <laughs> there's always a reason to go and watch these young kids develop. I'll be surprised if they take that batch of current draft picks into this draft. I think they could have maybe five picks in this draft and delay some of those picks uh, to next year, you know, trade them out for future picks and stack over two years rather than take the gamble on this draft being absolutely nailed. And I think the smart way to do it is wait till the draft night. Wait till live trading because if you get to pick 18, 20, 23, there'll be clubs sitting there and having a player on their list that they might have had at 11 mm -hmm. who's still available at 20 and they'll come over the top and say, Richmond, we'll give you a future second or we'll give you a future one to, to get in and get this pick. So I think they can do really nicely out of it if they just sit and hold tight. And they, with that many picks, roughly, they can balance it out, get the best mids early, get some tools, get some key forwards, key defenders and really have a nice balance that they can build on over the next three to yeah, they were wallowing in mediocrity. They'd only yeah. played in one final series since 2021. Yeah, I think you do what you can to get North Melbourne's future first. North is so keen to get back in. And so you might end up taking six or seven picks in this draft, and then you might have the first two picks in next year's draft, and that's when you start building, uh, you know, that critical mass to try and bounce up the ladder again. They've lost three of their top five in the best and fairest. So it's going to be tough yeah, going for a little while there. 